for this podcast. We're proud to partner with Zurich Life and Investments. As one of the last true independent life insurers, Zurich has always believed in the value of advice and the professionals who provide it. They continue to invest in programs such as this one that are designed to strengthen the health and reputation of the advice profession. They're excited about the chance to partner with us, XY Advisor, to help shape the future direction of advice and help make it more accessible to more Australians. To find out more or to check out some of the latest advisor support tools, visit the website or ask your Zurich BDM. We all know education is one of the biggest things in the industry at the moment. It's why we've created the XY Advisor platform. It allows advisors to do short four-week courses. And what we're really keen to do is to get as many awesome content providers in there. So if you're an advisor or a service provider who have put together an awesome solution which can affect change in the way an advisor does their job on a Monday morning, please do put together an application for us at www.xyadvisor.com. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. What am I, what am I not going to do? You're going to do that thing again. What thing? Uh, hello, hello. What's up? What's up? What's up? It's Chris. Welcome. Yeah, uh, mate, you're gonna you ruined my introduction. Let's so, still do it. Let's, yeah, okay. let's <laughs> not make that a thing, please. Come okay. on. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strike a light, Chris Bates. Welcome to the podcast. You fool. <laughs> <laughs> was this Miami radio or something? No, I mate. Don't, don't you remember that song no, when you were a little FM, kid? FM, I think. No, it's G'day, G'day. And how's it going? Do that. What That's do you way know? Better. That's heaps. Strike better. a light. <laughs> you know, when you're a kid. No. When you're in preschool. <laughs> Didn't you? No? No. Well, are you serious? All right. You're a bit older than us. <laughs> <laughs> Is it what gave it away? Was it the crow's feet? Or? Oh, no. stop it. <laughs> Mate, um, I've actually, to be fair, I feel like I'm in um, TV royalty right now. You are both just burning up the airwaves. Um, how many times have you been on Sky News now? Uh, twice. That's mad. <laughs> <laughs> that's still you've pretty mad. Def- oh, and how many absolutely. times have you been on Sunrise? Once. Yeah, that's still mad. Oh, Come yeah, on. Come on. That team's good. Yeah. But Sky lets anyone on. As, yeah. oh. as per this week. <laughs> yes. Did you follow Ben? No. The guy that you really look up to, uh, his name's Blair Cottrell. Mm. Learned about him this week. Right. Uh, far right, crazy dude, uh, was on Sky News and and, uh, and our mate Chris here was just likening his uh, reputation to, to, to <laughs> <laughs> association. We've both yeah, been on Sky, yeah, so uh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Good people only. Yeah. yeah, that's mad though. Did you? So the Sky thing. Did you get? Did you get much love out of it? Did you get a bit of? Uh, I don't think it really makes a big difference in the whole scheme of things. Already smashing I mean, it. I suppose how hard can you? I smash think it's. It? Mm. I think it's. I mean, how much content is in this world? Like, and then if you're on Sky once or twice. You know, like no one's really going to pick up on you, you know, really. But if you're mm. on Sky every week for six months, you know, that's where you, I think it makes a big difference. Did you pump it on social? I did actually. You just have to um, pay for the clip actually. Um, just so watch, they, they com- make, just watch like, it on your computer and just like just screen capture it. That's yeah, what I, did. I wasn't doing that. But um, I think you're not allowed to do that actually. Image rights. Oh, right. But um, on my yeah, YouTube they. Channel. They I actually had that. my little uh, little clip. They they put that one online. Oh, um, man. So that was good. Yeah, so that saved me two grand. Not that I would have paid it. <laughs> yeah, wow, two grand. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Well, Sunrise, they put it on the internet already. Like it's it's a, it's a they put it, they put the whole show on the internet. Hmm. Well, it might be a bit different then. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I'm such a rookie with that stuff. I just like no idea. So out of place. Mm. Come on, guys. How, I mean, between the, the, between the... Both of you, I mean, there's three, three appearances <laughs> three at this appearance. stage. I, I mean, at the rate that we're going, we're going to have the Love Boat Total sequel. Domination. We'll be on Channel 84 soon. <laughs> <laughs> have you been on the telly? Um, no, but I've watched a lot of it. Right. Yeah. How many minutes did you get on the TV? Uh, 20. Over, over, over two. That's way more than me. Over two, yeah. That's mad. You just talked about Bank West. They told me that I was going to get four minutes and I was like, whoa, that is a very short amount of time. Then I got there and they're like, cut it down two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in, that beard has got to go. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, I don't get man. That was uh, yeah, fire for social content. So oh, yeah. ha- happy with it. But it's it's such a weird thing. As I was saying to Batey before, like uh, 
I grabbed a clip, whacked it on the on the across the socials, and just people that I've been connected with for ages, but that and some that I'd had conversations with that they just reach out. They're like, "Oh, need to need to do something." So I think it's just that. Um, I suppose, um, yeah, like verification, like you're not, uh, you, you know, you've got that legitimacy there, or someone's interested in your opinion. It's always good to know. Yeah, and and you've because obviously you've been big on on LinkedIn for a long time. Um, and, and you've recently, or when I say recently, I think you're up to episode about 11 or 12 at this stage on the podcast, right? Double that. What? How many times are you releasing per week? Twice. Whoa. Hmm. Damn, boy. What's up? Hmm. How's the podcast going? Yeah, it's good. So we've done 40 episodes. Whoa, wow. man. So, uh, but 20 are out. Wow. Um, but yeah, like 20 Shit, in the bank. that's a serious bank. Yeah, uh, adding up as well because they're doing it in a studio like this. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's good. We're going to Melbourne f- next month for eight episodes, which is cool. Yeah, oh, you're traveling around to do episodes. Yeah, and then we're doing some in Brisbane in October, which will be cool. Is that to intru- to sort of meet new people? Yeah, or? we were getting very Sydney dominated. Yes. So, or Sydney centric. So, yeah, it's good to you know bring other states in. Wow, man, that's what impressive. Are you, what are you chatting about on the podcast? <clears throat> well, listen to it, mate. I don't, I'm not much of one for podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, okay, that makes absolutely no sense, <laughs> but righto. Oh, no. Yeah, don't listen to podcasts. I listen occasionally. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't really... Like, it's a waste I don't of time. Tr- I don't drive. No, 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 it's not that. They were great. I'd, I've, I've listened to some great podcasts. Um, but XY? I don't really, yeah, a few of those have been pretty good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, but I don't, I don't really drive. Like I, I don't drive around much. When I drive, I do, that's some time that I do listen to podcasts. I walk to work. I walk with my wife. That's my like downtime. So I don't listen to stuff on the way in. And then during the day I work and then during the night I work and then I go to sleep and I don't listen to podcasts. Okay. That much. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Fair I wonder enough. when your listeners are listening to this. It must be. I yeah, think to listen on the way to work. That's a lot of the feedback that I get when people are walking around. Mm. What are yeah. you doing right now? Yeah, listener. <laughs> yeah. 200 people a day. We're, we're, we're at 200 people a day. Are you? Downloading. Yeah, which blows my mind. Right? Yeah, it, it blows my mind. Um, yeah, so uh, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that we're not wasting their time. So Chris mm. Bates, uh, mate, tell us something about property, what's going on. So we've had lots of different like elements to the property market. So we had the one getting released tomorrow is all about Airbnb. So we've got like a Bernard Salt's sidekick. This is the podcast? Yeah. So Mad. he's coming on. We've got, um, which is a guy called Simon, can't say his last name. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, Horace? we've got some. Is it Horace? No, nah, it's like how uh, Burtz or something like that. Oh, right. um, but he's a legend, mm. property demographer. So he's amazing. We've had like Chris and Case from... Yeah, news. I've had like many different. Shannon Whitney, which is probably the CEO Whoa. of Australia's biggest agency. Whoa. John Cunningham, which is like, he's like the main kind of leader of real estate. So he's kind of gone full circle, started 40 years ago, gone all the way up to the top of the REA, and now he's trying to push it to become a profession. Um, like he's amazing. Right. Like Owen Morton, which you would probably see Morton everywhere. They're, yep. They do lots of city apartments. Yep. Uh-huh. Pretty much biggest name. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, and they're really interesting because we've the, the tack that we're going at is like let's not talk about property market. Let's talk about what's happening. What's happening with buyers? What's happening with yeah. sellers? What are they doing wrong? How are you working buyers? How are you getting to make offers? You know, what's you know, what's a buyer doing that's a mistake? Yep. Um, you know, can we trust real estate agents? Should we be friends with them? And it just we keep kind of going deeper and deeper and kind of opening them up because, you know, if you're a true professional, you don't mind talking about these things because it's lifting the, the standard to a higher level and you're raising the bar and sure. that's what they're doing. So that's good. And who's we? Is uh, it, is it me and Veronica Morgan, which she was on location, location, location. Oh, right. Oh, wow. So, How did you swing that? Uh, having a Thai lunch. Right. Uh, yeah, so we're just sitting down. <laughs> Pad Thai? Or? Yeah. I think I was having Singapore noodles. <laughs> oh, I like it. Um, a, that must have been a clincher. Yeah, a bit of a massimo curry. <laughs> oh, that is, yeah. yeah. I'm oh, doing yeah. business with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and no, I just said, look, I think we should do a podcast together. And she's like, I think we should too. And then, yeah, yeah, we just got chatting. It took us about a month to kind of come up with a bit of a brand. We sussed out some podcast experts. That didn't really work out. And then we uh-huh. thought, 
well, let's just give this a crack. Mm. Um, and then we, a friend, which you might know, Simon Russell, Behavioural Finance Australia. You know, I have definitely heard of his name. Was that yeah, the, he, the net wealth thing recently? He might have been, but I wasn't there. Psychologist? Yeah, he is. He's a psychologist. Worked like at NAB. Really long. Curly. No, he's no, okay, bald as a badger. One. Right. Um, sorry, Simon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so no, he's a legend. I've known him for a few years. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, if you're looking to understand behavioral finance, I went to one of his, um, training courses. I don't think he does them anymore. Right. It was like 400 bucks and a whole room and explaining how behavioral finance works and all the anchoring. And it was really interesting. Yeah. And I've just stayed in contact since. Awesome. Anyway, so we got him on first episode. And um, I said, Simon, we want to get you on our podcast. We want it to all be about the behavioral behind the property market. You know, can you come on? He's like, well, I don't know nothing about property. <laughs> he's like, I'm like, that's fine. That's okay. We just want to open your brain up uh, yeah. and talk about it. Anyway, so good on him. He went to an auction with his son and he doesn't, I don't think he's, he might not even own a property, but he was, he hasn't really been to many auctions and he just took a, like a kind of blanket view at it and just listened to the auctioneer and said, what is this auctioneer trying to do right now? Like, how is he trying to bend the crowd? And he has he was actually one of the, the best auctioneers in Melbourne. So this guy was a smooth kind of customer. Um, and he was just dropping out all these behavioral things. So he's like dropping anchoring, he's dropping in loss aversion, he's dropping in recency, all these kind of biases that, you know, you don't know that are affecting you. And he was yeah. just dropping them in, in in the auction. And he was urgency, scarcity. Um, and so he's just like going, bloody hell, this guy just keeps on going. Um, wow. And it's, it was a very interesting because, you know, that kind of, you don't know that this is impacting you yeah. and it's forcing you to make a bid and it's getting you overconfident. Yeah. And um, that's when we decided to call it the elephant in the room. Mm. And yeah, it's good. And because um, it, it, obviously when you're on LinkedIn and uh, you don't shy away, you know, d that, that's not words that I would use to describe your post. You, you certainly wouldn't shy away from a prickly topic or, uh, or, or, or putting, you know, a statement out there. Mm. Does that sells news, good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> and, but does that does you know does that cause issues with people when you're speaking to them on the podcast? If if so, if they've got a competing uh, view, right? So someone says, "No, actually, I think off the plan is bloody excellent." And and it, does that lead, then lead to a robust discussion, or or you just wouldn't would, have them on there? We would love to have someone like that on there. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I mean, we they probably wouldn't want to come on. <laughs> And that's just being frank. I mean, we, you know, I guess Veronica and I got very strong views on property and mm. if they were willing to come on, we would love to have them on. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the, we've had like lots of real estate agents, which, you know, have potentially worked in that space and we've asked some curly questions um, and yeah, they've, 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 you know, answered them in their way. Um, yeah. And are you getting, are you getting much, um, like, what are the results that you're getting out of it? Are you seeing that? Obviously, it's only early-ish days, but are you, uh, do you, you know, you're getting feedback from the people that you've been yes. talking to your list or whatever, or how's that working? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I even today, a cl new client, has he's just had his baby, but, you know, once he gets through this, he's going to buy his first home. And he's like, yeah, loving the podcast, loving the psychology angle. Like, that was just one line. Now, he's, he's not really a client yet, but mm. he's there listening to the podcast, he's learning, He's digesting my voice and Veronica's voice, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so he's, he's and, I, and he's actually getting trained up on like the things that I need him to understand, right? And right, so he's kind yeah. of coaching himself by doing this. And um, yeah, another amazing new client. Um, yeah, he's like, they're buying, you know, $3 million house in Des Moines and they, they've listened to every single episode. Wow. And he's like, he's like an exec at a tech company. Wow. Um, so like it's, you know, this guy's a first home buyer, but this guy's pretty you know, he's pretty time poor. He's and yeah. he's he's uh, investing in it. So, yeah, we're getting um, we're getting some really good. Like one of our guests, he was like, "Well, yeah, this is definitely going to turn into like a like a TV show of some sort, just because mm. it's it's kind of like that ABC show that you can't ask that." Have you mm. seen that? I think I've got. I think I know a guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for the TV show. <laughs> oh, you know someone that's on that TV show? No, I know someone that uh, likes t good TV show ideas. All right, we'll take this offline. Oh, nice. like Love Island or something like that. So. Oh, do no, you, like that? Do, do like you have? Do you have is one of your clients like a TV exec or something? Could be personally. Ask no questions, tell no lies. It's koshy, I think. Koshy. Yeah, it is koshy. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's um, always Koshi. <laughs> yeah. So, th- th- so these people, like those couple of people that you mentioned, yeah. did they find you with the podcast, or were uh, you already connected? No. So they hadn't. Um, I haven't really found too many people yet come via the podcast. Actually, no, I have. Actually, yes, I have. Um, yeah. So a guy came straight off the podcast, listened to the podcast, emailed me, said, been listening to the podcast, can yep. to chat. Awesome. Yeah. Mad. And we've only been on live like for eight weeks. Okay. So, yeah. or maybe 10. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so are you, and so just, just in terms of like promotion and stuff of the, of the podcast, are you seeing that build over the... Oh. Yeah, so we got like, I think it was 4,000 in our first month and then Ooh, I think we're like 7,000 or something in July. Whoa. So, so I think I'm getting like 300 a day, so it's good. Wow, okay. man, That's that is sick. impressive. Yeah. So, I mean, some days are 90, but oh, yeah, we've yeah, had yeah. Well, lots of days over 300 and the fact that averaging the fact that, well over 100. The yeah. fact that 90 people would listen per day, mm. does that not freak you out? It freaks me out. Yeah. It does. It really does. Mm. That so people are really busy. But so, for example, I don't watch any TV anymore. So I, my TV is not plugged into Netflix or like the TV channel. It's mm. just plugged into the internet. So all I watch, if I sit down and watch anything, is something on YouTube. Mm. And the best things to watch on YouTube are podcasts. Mm. So my, any or, uh, Four Corners AB uh, AMP story the other day. Oh yeah. That was pretty heavy. That was pretty heavy. I actually got called by someone who's high up in the industry that was like, hey, you used to own a, a, a company, it was, you know, Hill Ross, which was owned by A&P. Would you like to uh, speak at this thing? And I said, no, thank you. Yeah. No, I do not. No, <laughs> I just I don't want to play any role in anything ever <laughs> with this. And And that guy that went on there, you know, he, he's like the w- quote unquote whistleblower. Mm. Um, yeah, I think he's received, you know, a little bit of investigation into him. And it's like, well, well like, what are you doing, mate? Mm. You know, mm. um, so much heat, so much heat on the, the big four and, and AMP. And I think for, for consumers as well, just massive backlash. Like, I've got people like bank accounts, they want to close down bank accounts with these, Man, that's with crazy. these organizations, which are government guaranteed and, mm. you know, you need a bank account. But I think young people in particular, they're just like more of a socially responsible and it just doesn't align like the, the, yeah, yeah, the backlash. Yeah. But I, I'm hopeful that I think these guys have definitely got a role to play. I think um, I'm hopeful that they can fix, you know, the issues and, uh, yeah, be there. it's a for-profit company. Clearly, this is what we were, ta- we were chatting about just before. That yeah, you know, you can't um, you you can't be surprised that these people are trying to make as much money as they can, especially they've got shareholders, etc. But uh, the ethical frameworks, you know, those two schools of ethical thought that everybody knows about <laughs> <laughs> deontology and utilitarianism. <laughs> exactly. That, uh, Thank you, FPA yeah, uh, cl- uh, uh, study one. Mm. <laughs> Kaplan. Uh, no FPA. Oh right. Yeah, yeah. Well, the CFP, the CFP. Sorry, CFP one. Mm. And so, how are you? Pr- how are you promoting? How are you promoting the podcast? Uh, I'm not doing any paid advertising or anything like that. You are pushing out to your list and stuff. It's just though? LinkedIn, really. And Veronica's yeah. got her kind of database, and mm. um, I don't think she's got a massive, massive database. You know, I think we've got have to be reasonably big, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah. So we, I don't know. I think we've got maybe about 500 listeners. I reckon, like who were subscribed mm. and because every episode's kind of getting 500, 700. Yeah, you get that big spike on that first day, right? Yeah. It's like, and surprising how fast the spike actually happens. Yeah. So no, like, me too, man. I didn't even understand what was going on. I'm yeah. like, what, what, what's happening on this day? <laughs> and then, <laughs> oh, it's the day we're releasing, therefore it's massive. And so obviously someone's trying to digest it yeah. the same day they get it, which is quite cool. So like if you – like I'm going to do one today, tonight or tomorrow morning, and then you might see, bang, 300 people listen to it in the first, you yeah. know, 24 hours, which is crazy. It's quite cool. So that means it's 300 people who are, you know, keen to listen, yeah. right? So, yeah, no, it's feeling good. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I mean, the next four, 20 episodes are probably going to be, you know, better than the first 20. So, Whoa. Yeah. I've heard that they improve over time. Yeah, I think do. we used to scrape the sound off of like a blab recording over oh, like five sets of patches. And our first sort of 60 were uh, rookie central. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's yeah. the LinkedIn going? <laughs> it's going good. Uh, I'm banned. 
Are you? Yes. No! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're in when jail. This, like when? As of yesterday? No, nah, because I months. liked, mate. I liked. So I'm one on. Of your I'm posts. on there, but I'm. Um, I literally liked liked one of your posts. I think today you or yesterday. You can still like me. You can still comment, but I can't add you. Oh, why? Are you over limit? Oh, mm, no, no, I haven't hit thirty thousand. So I was, I was adding probably, I don't know, five hundred to a thousand a week. Wow! At, like it was snowballing, and, uh, and I was just like. I'd post something, 300 likes, bang, well, I had 50. And then it was kind of getting out of control a little bit. And then- But uh, you were doing that for ages, weren't you? Yeah, I did that for, I don't know, a good 12 months. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so I, was, I got to like 22,000 and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to hit the 30 soon. So I'm just going to go- Is and the 30 the max or something? 30 is like max, yeah. Right. Mm. Um, which is fair enough. Like you think about 30,000, it's still, you know, feels a football stadium. Um, a lot yeah, of man. Yep. Um, so- yeah, I was like, well, I've got to delete a few thousand here because I'm going to hit 30,000 in the next probably six months. So I'll just do a bit of a filter. Oh, I've added a few people in the Philippines and India and things like that and planners and brokers and mm. etc. I'm glad I didn't get deleted. No, I kept you. I kept you. Because I, li- <laughs> I like occasionally. Yeah, so. yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I hit 30, though, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You've played your role, Clay. Get out of here. <laughs> I think once you hit 30, though, that people can still add you. Uh, follow, yeah. People, No, but people can still connect with you. N- you can't actually be connection. They can only follow you. Uh, no, I think you can. Can you right? Yeah, yeah, because I, I did this LinkedIn. We'll chat about this in a sec, but I did this LinkedIn thing the other night with this guy, and he's like a LinkedIn guru, and he's over. He's like thirty one thousand and a bit because I think he hit thirty, and then and but other people can still invite you to connect, and you can still. Ah. I could be wrong because I've got no idea you, what I'm talking. about. Are you about. still using that automatic software? No. <laughs> 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 yeah right. Yeah, because you can get you can. I used Just it. Just be I used careful it, with those as well. I used it for one yeah. day. I used it for one day, and I was too scared to add because I'm really scared to add anyone on LinkedIn. Mm. Um, so I just I'm worried about the rejection. I, I just no. <laughs> Doesn't it's like to ask it's for because anything, I know I, I know the feeling I have when someone asks me to join with with. The, I'm like I'm always. But no like, one ever puts a note. No one ever puts a note. It's, it's like, free. man, if put someone a puts a note, if someone puts a note, I know, I know they're going to try and sell me like within 24 hours. Mm. No. Like if no note, I'm like, I'm more likely to accept them because I know they're not on their little mission to try and sell me. I, I just think note. it's courtesy. I think. You no know note? I, I was no note, but now I'm a note. <laughs> Mate, even when I, like, well, I'll connect with people that I, like, um, my clients, uh, obviously, um, people that I meet at events and people in the industry sometimes mm. um, and always put a note. Like you, it's just, that's just a human mm. thing. Like be nice, but hey, is awesome it a personalized note or is it? Yeah, 100%. 100%. You look when really I do good it, in your picture and you look like a great company you work No, 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 because it's normally those ones are when when I've met them. When it's, oh, I, I've, got the, I've got the system and the system has a personalized note, which is which is the same for every, mm. every person, but. Um, but it's still a. I think it's a note, like a leap. Yeah, anyway. Do you do you guys understand how Pinterest works? Now it's yeah, not- well, doing wedding planning, I think you've got to. No, but no, you it, don't. No, you definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> but check this. So <laughs> this this is how this is how Pinterest works. You know how you're both building a LinkedIn audience, right? On Pinterest, it, I'll 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 put it. I'll frame it in this way. I can join your. Like I can access your audience and you can access my audience. And right. so what you can do with like, if you know the right people with a big audience on Pinterest, you can access 100,000 people mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and, and have done zero work. Right. So yeah. Like Justin Bieber that or sounds like your complete no. jam actually. Um, yeah. Talk, <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. No, I learned this at FinCon. Did did you learn about this? At no, FinCon? they weren't talking about FinCon. They were just talking about podcasts. Pinterest. The, 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 but who is Pinterest? Okay, so basically everyone that was raking it in in FinCon was using Pinterest as a way to to promote their stuff to yeah, right. to um not not any other platform. It was Pinterest. Wow. Pinterest. I think it's a theme. I wonder what it will be this year. Interesting. Mm. But anyway, so I've got to get to the bottom of this. So you deleted the people and then what happened? Well, and so then I was like, well... Just gonna continue doing what I've been doing. There's no reason to stop, right? Like so. Yeah. Um, then bang. If you want to add someone, you've got to put an email address. 
himself. I was like, oh shit, oh, what's right. happened? Did you uh, talk to him again? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, uh, they're trying to get me in to do like a like a coaching with the women at Willings Inn. And so I was like straight onto like my contact there. I was like, hey, you know when I'm trying to help you, <laughs> can you help me? Yeah. Uh, she's like, I'll try, I'll try. Uh, no cigar. And then <laughs> went to another friend, uh, another client at LinkedIn. Like, Mate, can you help me? No. Nah. And um, how many people did you delete? I deleted through two to three. So I wasn't, it must have been two to three. Because I, I was, yeah. Do you ever clear out the unaccepted invites? I've always just said. Unless no, 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 when no, you no, send no. an invite. You send an invite. Oh, yes, yes. So I did that. So I deleted probably a thousand. Yeah. Right. I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll delete the thousand. I'll get the premium version, which is like a hundred bucks a month, yeah. to prove that I'm a sales loyal. Is mad. Yeah, love yeah. sales. Uh, and then I will write a nice email. Yeah, and I probably might. Oh, did this, you know, email blah blah blah. I'm great LinkedIn lover. I'm a you know brand advocate. You try to get me in two years ago to be part of your advocates group. You know, you can look at all my content. I'm not spamming people. Yeah, that's a weird thing because, like, obviously your content is, like, fire on there, like, with the, with all the, tra- like, crazy, crazy, like, traction that I yeah. could only personally dream about. Like, so, yeah, it's, that's. <laughs> yeah, so that was April. Um, it was about three emails back and forth with a lovely lady in San Fran, I assume. Yeah. Um, and it was like a, no, nah, ban for life. For life. For life. Whoa. Can you message people and stuff? I can still do all that. I just yeah. can't I just can't add people without email. Oh my god. Shit. So did they tell you why? Uh just because I'd I set off too many like I don't know yous. Oh, okay. Right. So when you yeah, send a connection okay. request, you know yeah. when you say, Oh, do you know this person? And then you might say, I don't know you. Yeah. And so I'd set that off and Oh. And and it was just because I think I was maybe adding fifty I'd say 50, 100 a day, right? And then, oh, and then, it was, and then by the end, it was probably getting more than like, maybe 200 a day. I had about 200 a day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, really? Yeah. Well, there you go. So, um, yeah. That's what my software lets me do after the 200. Right. Okay. There you go. The mm. software. What are you on? The LinkedIn software. Yeah. Like LinkedIn.com. <laughs> <laughs> right. That software. Yeah. Okay. Right, that's that's brutal. Surely, that's so surely true. there's a, there's another way. There's another. There's got to be oh, another way. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's interesting. So it's uh, it, it's it's. I mean, it's fine to be honest. I mean, I guess it's. 20, I'm still getting a massive amount of people. Yeah, I'm still getting twenty to thirty a day adding me. Oh, so fantastic. like you go well, like really twenty to thirty people add you per day. Yeah. That's amazing. So like, that's I like how you emphasize you there. Add you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You definitely did that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, how's the how's because are you still running the same content strategy where you're doing are you still doing that? You were doing the two <laughs> posts a day and stuff? Yeah, yeah. You're still doing that? Yeah, yeah, still doing that. Today not so much. But um yeah, generally still two a day. Uh-huh. And I mean if I if I come up with a third, I'll just throw a third on there. I'm kind of just nice. flexing it a bit, just seeing what um yeah, I mean, if I want to get it out, I've probably been a little bit slack recently. Like, as I've probably been, I've been busier than probably normal. Um, Stick to what works, Batesy. Yeah, That's what made and you busy, mate. So a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, spelling's probably dropped a bit, and my grammar's probably dropped a bit, which is good feedback I've had. It just um, humanizes you, man. Yeah, well, yeah. that's true. Um, mm. So it's cool. Like a client who's like a PR expert kind of said, "Look, Chris, loving what you're doing. Just I can see you're getting a bit busy and." You're dropping the ball a little bit, and right. so she's like, "Just pick up your spelling a bit. Just, mm. just go because you can, you can notice it a little bit now." And so that was that was good advice. Yeah, um, it's good advice. I got I sent an email to a VC yesterday because um, they they were like, "Hey, let's catch up," and I'm like, "Yeah, definitely." And then I was like, "Well, you, uh, you're in you're in town on these days. Let's catch up." And I read it again this morning, and it's Y O U R. No apostrophe, R-E. That's bad. 
That's going to cost me a million dollars right there. <laughs> <laughs> so I so I did this webinar the other night with this uh, this LinkedIn LinkedIn expert Adam Hulahan. Funny because we just did that podcast with Michael Hulahan not too long ago. Um, but he he's the 30 30k and a bit uh, one, and he, he was talking about some interesting stuff. Like because I've been doing, I mentioned before, I, I've got this crazy run of clients at the moment, which is untypical for me. But I found that I think like. Uh, maybe half of my recent clients have actually come from LinkedIn. Like that that's mm-hmm. where the connection started. So I'm like, shit, this is definitely worth investing in. Like, and this is like significant like client fees and stuff, you know? Like so um anyway, this guy's doing this thing and he's supposed to be the guru. So I went on the thing. But they were talking, it was quite interesting that they were talking about um like LinkedIn now, they don't want you to post any links out to Yeah, it's always to, been a case, yeah. To different things. So they what? do yeah. So if you link off makes LinkedIn, sense though, yeah. Oh, of course it makes sense. Yeah, but um, well, ah. if you're watching ABC, they don't want to say go watch Channel Seven, do they? Yeah, yeah I but it's it it's sense. weird because you're already on the platform. But anyway, so he was showing examples about how you you know you're not supposed to put it in your post, and then uh, but you can put it in the comments. Yeah. So you could put like make a post. And then at the bottom of the post, put link in first comment, and then you put the thing in. That's okay, and it gets it basically gets four four to five times the reach of. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, I was wondering why the reach was so small when I put the podcast up. With and it's got, and it's why. got like five links in there. Yeah, I mean it's not really something that people <laughs> yeah. are going to really like or comment anyway. Yeah, totally. It's not. It's not like and so. Like I'll do a. You know, elephant in the room podcast. This is our great episode. A tr- little but you don't snazzy. link it. You, don't you know, link I link it, it and but oh, okay. I mean, and but you, it's not going to get anywhere near much as traction as. Oh, totally, because they're forced to do something rather yeah. than get the dopamine hit and be like, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. like, and it's also a little bit of self promotion, right? And sure. you know, like, so it's not going to self promotion is not really why people are on LinkedIn. Yeah, they learn. And- is it self promotion though? I yeah. don't know. Well, it's definitely promotion. It's a. And yeah, it's watch my something stuff that you or did, listen so. to me. So yeah. I suppose that's self promotion. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah I think There's that's There's nothing a, wrong with self promotion. I think, I think that's the definition of self promotion. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was, uh, yeah. So he, so this guy, he, Adam Hulahan, he was talking about, um, he, he was saying that he has found that the ideal uh, amount, amount of content to post in a month was like 12 to 14 posts a month. Um, what that's what he said that's what he does and he, and what he the other thing that he said that I found quite interesting was that he said that the he's found that the most effective posts are posts with words with no pictures but it was I couldn't quite understand what he was saying that he was saying that the ones with pictures they get more impressions but he said that the ones with no pictures get more engagement for some reason mm. I I thought that was quite interesting it is. That was what I. He's got this super guru LinkedIn course, which I seemed okay. But I think why. I mean, that's the clickbait with it all. It's like here's a few lines. If you want to listen more, press read more, and then you press read more, and then you kind of in, and then it's like, you know, it's generally a little bit more. I don't know more. Yeah, it's, a pitch is kind of more of a statement. I feel like, and I think the text is more of a com- commentary sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, I haven't done it. <laughs> I've not. I wouldn't uh, know. Yeah. But, it, but the views are definitely going down, and the way that they do their algorithms, hundred percent has changed. So mm. I can get the same amount of like, same amount of comments, but the, the reach is not as much as it was. So yeah, man, this is the issue with building on on a third party platform. However, yeah. the podcast is your own platform, mm. and no one can take that from you. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, in a way, but Besides but ASIC. then you get promoted through. So it's ASIC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a little bit different because we're not we, we don't give advice to any clients, but I guess technically you're talking about advice to people. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Imagine that. <laughs> Actually, we, we were talking with a, a podcast um, in a prior podcast, and they they were subpoenaed. All right. Yeah, and it sounds so scary, but it was no every single uh, um, industry fund was subpoenaed for the Royal Commission. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but still. Mm. You've been served, bitch. Yeah, that's right. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Scary, man. Scary. What are you working on in your business at the moment, Uh So the podcast, obviously. Um, I'm saying I've just my messaging is getting very, very like I'm getting everyone on this call, but 
it's like literally did three this afternoon and it's like 15, 20 minutes, you know, this is what you need to do from a, you I know, what you need to post. get ready. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just trying to systemize things as much. I've, I've got to definitely hire someone and, you know, just trying to figure out what's the right move. Um, yeah. What are you thinking there? I don't know. Like, I think I'm trying to get it to a point where the clients I'm really working. I'm not sure if it's just going nuts because it's going nuts at the moment mm. uh, or it's like a sustainable kind of ridiculous uh, volume. So mm. I'm trying to see if it's consistently like this for maybe another six months and then. Like, Why don't you start the next Aussie home loans? You could call it mm. Batesy's home loans. No, no, no. Why? <laughs> it's because you're just selling a commoditized product. Very good point. Very good point. It's okay. Not, so who's in your team at the moment? Is it just you? Just me. But I use yeah. like, um, yeah, lots of like all the mortgage applications. And I mean, just before this, I checked my team's kind of made sure the valuations are ordered on three files and mm. et cetera. So I've got people in the back office doing all that. So yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, the major time is really, I don't know whether I could save myself. And that's what I'm trying to question myself. Am I saving myself time by hiring someone or, or not? And can I build better systems and processes? And I'm trying to get really quick at that um, before mm. I kind of, you know, get little Johnny or Jill next to me. Yeah. Well, look, I think staffing for small business is one of the biggest pain points. I know it definitely is for me. Yeah. Um, like it's it's just so hard to know how do you do it? What's the best way? Find the right people. Get them motivated. Can you not eat more cookies? Like, because I can just hear every mouthful that you're having. Yeah, they're not podcast friendly, are they? Really? No, that is not a podcast friendly biscuit. <laughs> just eat some rice. All right, thanks. Our listenership just went down by like 100 per day. <laughs> but I think it's um yeah it's de- and and it, like I'm in this business coaching group where it's like a like they do community like events for all the people in the group and definitely when when people get to talking like one of the biggest challenges is that staffing and mm-hmm. how do you grow the team i'm definitely struggling with it as well um mm. there's no know. right way or wrong way like the easy option is higher right you know you just just hire and see how it goes but you know if you're not really sure where you want it to end up or the person you're mm. hiring where you want them to end up like i kind of feel like you're you're kind of just putting a problem and it's yeah, so I'm trying to, I guess, figure out this is how I want to, you know, my 10-year kind of long-term where I'm trying to get at the perfect team and trying to get the right person to fit into that and at least take us in the right direction there. So you're going to write a book? Uh, maybe, yeah. It's a lot of work. Ben's nearly finished his. Mm. Mine's finished. I just got my internal It's called back. Go Unstuck Yourself. All oh, right. No, or Get Unstuck. Get Unstuck. Yeah. Yeah. But it if you were to horrendous. replace the word unstuck with... The F bomb. Well, that's uh, Melissa Brown's book. Have you mm. seen that? Un F U C K your finances. You can say that. Wish I've read that. And that. Um, yeah, it's good. I am yeah. reading. I am I like reading it. it. I think it's a great title. I saw it come out. And I was like, whoa! I was like, that's that's just next level. Yeah, it's not going to suit your parents, though, is it? But that's not who uh, <laughs> she's targeting. That's probably the point, mm. I suppose. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. I mean, I um, yeah. I mean, there's writing a book, but I think the the a book it can be a book from a marketing point of view, which mm. you want, which is great. No, it sounds good, but people probably won't read it. Or it can yeah. be a proper book where you invest a lot of time. And so are you saying that people aren't going to read my book? I didn't say it's a, yeah, it's a, it depends. It's if it's a marketing it's a distinct, book and you kind of. It's a distinct possibility. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of work yeah. and I'm not entirely sure if it's worth it, but it was fun and mm. I'm glad I did it. But you get, the, when you sign up to Sprout Super, you get that free Amazon bestseller. You wouldn't be able to do that, right? Not everyone does, mate. Not everyone does. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. I, think I mean, if you invest in the process, if you kind of get out of the uh, outcomes you want from it, I think that's the, one, the most powerful thing about producing content, right? Because it's yeah, not so much. Absolutely. It's not so much what you get out of it. It's your brain's learning and making calls on things and is developing and pushing itself For and challenging sure. itself. And then yeah. once you actually get it out there, that's that's the reward. And so yeah. it's like reading a book, producing content's the same. Definitely. Yeah. Are, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, the person that produces the content gets the biggest reward. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I noticed that when I was doing my book that like I had, I had all these ideas, but I didn't have it. Crystallized. I, yeah, exactly. Right. So so I hadn't thought through how the pieces fit together. And even from the time that I started the book to the end, I changed our like whole 
the product method, if you follow that KPI mm. um, sort of mentality, which is the areas and how they all connect together and what are the key things. And what it also did was that it led me into a lot of behavioral psychology research, which that's the whole first third of my book is awesome, all, all around that psychology. And I'd been doing this banking stuff, which you yeah. know we, we basically – um, sort of, I stole a few and then uh, tweaked, tweaked, and tweaked, and tweaked until it was heaps better, uh, arguably. And <laughs> um, <laughs> and I didn't know why. I didn't know why that worked. I just knew that it worked, and that was enough. I was like, well, you know, let's not be greedy here. If it works, it works. That's that's great. Then I started doing the research, and then I was like, whoa! I was like, all you know, the things that you're talking about before. Uh, willpower depletion, you know, the power of barriers, the yeah, um, man. Yeah, all yeah, yeah. of those things, you know. Willpower depletion, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good yeah. way massive, to put it. Massive. That's the and opposite then... goal gradient theory, which is, you know, like you get tired, but then you actually, if you're getting closer to your goal, you can see it, you actually pick up pace. Yeah, but it's day to day. This is not like, this is not you're uh you're buying the three million dollar dream home this is like you've just worked your ass off all day and you're going do i go home and eat the quinoa or do i just like just go to that like i'm gonna go treat myself because i got a mad bonus and then um i'm gonna go to that fancy place and you know well when you just named three right so you got uh mental accounting i've got a mad bonus so i should waste it yeah so it's not income so you look at that differently to um yeah i mean your self-control like there so hmm. yeah i mean that's that's the thing I, I i agree it's absolutely fascinating behavioral finance um dan o'reilly's new book which is called uh small change uh unbelievable like yeah yeah that's uh I have not read it yeah i think if you just keep investing in that as an advisor i think the more you can understand that the more you can understand your clients and how that and actually educate them and articulate them mate absolutely yeah. so decision fatigue was a huge part of, of my book Mm. And then I ended up coming, the, the solution I ended up coming up with was I called it uh, cognitive minimalism. Nice. Didn't catch on. Cognitive is a hard word to say. Yeah. Just cognitive minimalism. Never caught on. Yeah. Strangely. Strangely. Yeah. I, I thought I well, thought it was pretty cool. I, in fact, I thought it was so cool that I, I got the, you thought it was cool. I got the URL. <clears throat> so oh, I, got, right. I got cognitive minimalism <laughs> and cognitive minimalist. Ooh, I got both of them. Right, yeah. No one's offered to buy oh, it yet. That's why they call it crazy domains. <laughs> 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 that's a, probably a good idea. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. No, I mean, if you want to look at minimalism, though, like financial minimalism resonates. Maybe not cognitive <laughs> minimalism, but financial minimalism. People love that, right? Yeah, yeah, because people yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you look Sugar at, Mama TV. That's Kenna. That's what I was going to say. Kenna Campbell. Like, Have you met her? No. We asked her to come on the podcast and she booked in and uh, she just couldn't make it. Um, but we had someone fill in for her, so thankfully. But we would love to have her. So, mm. yeah. Oh, man. She's I'm a rock blown star, away man. By success. Yep. She she's a rock star. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah no, she she nails it. Like I mean, she's absolutely you know smashing YouTube. Yeah, everything she she's got like a yeah. hundred thousand followers or something. Right? Yeah, oh, oh. Maybe more than that. I think it's even really be seven figures. Whoa, um, damn, yeah, it's pretty crazy because it's snowballing for it, right? So yeah. I've got you know you know it's like Ben subscribers now. First seventeen, man, seventeen. Can you believe that? Shit. How many people are in your I family? I can't, and I feel sorry for them. I know, yeah, they don't follow me. It's, I'm, I'm the black Even sheep. Even they don't subscribe. I'm the black sheep. <laughs> Do you spend any time on YouTube? I, I watch it at home. I am. I'm mm. definitely trying to figure out this video thing. Um, mm. So I want to do a different take on it. I've tried a few different things. I haven't. So I'm yeah, just YouTube going. has its. I, I, it has. It has a thing where yeah, people just, are like, "I'm a YouTuber," yeah, and I present like a YouTuber. Yeah, Craig's nailing it. Craig Bigelow, he's doing really well. Like he's on his insurance. Oh so, yeah. yeah, awesome man. He's a uh, champ. Such yeah. a champ. Yeah, oh, yeah I haven't seen his stuff. Yeah, he's 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 um because there is there's a process to it. You know, you're there to digest and learn, but I I don't know if that's you know the right hundred percent way for me. Yep. But so I think there's there's a it's got to be value in video if you're not in figuring it out somehow. Um, someone else will. Yeah, and... we've we've got to upgrade from the phone. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 We. I just nice started screen as well. I just started punching out a few videos <laughs> in my in my email sequence, my onboarding. So when someone like Oh, you showing your face? I wouldn't. Well, I've got to get them used to it, you know. It's, it reduces the shock factor at the back end when it's like, oh, "Hey, shit. come see me," and "Hey, give me ten thousand dollars." <laughs> it's like just one shock at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Is the beard still working or? 
Oh, uh, well, it seems, you know, I did, I try. I trimmed it up a bit. I, mm. no, not that short, but, um, I, I trimmed it up and then I realized I'd gone too far, but. Was yeah. the, uh, spike in business because of the gray or? Uh, oh, mate, that's a, that's a trend. That's just a. That's mate, a you should shave it trend. off. Bring that, oh, bring man, that beautiful yeah. Benny face Yang back had, to Yang it. and kill me. I got in trouble last time because I trimmed it too short. Wow. Yeah. Mate, when are you getting married? Feb 15. Oh, oh look at that. Exciting. Do you have to pay extra for the wedding? Uh, no, doing it on Friday, but uh, but it's, it's the day uh, after Valentine's Day, right? But we got the venue for the whole weekend, so it's... Uh, oh, wow. Where are you getting married? Uh, down South sweetheart. Coast. Can't say the venue. Secret. Okay, fair enough. Secret. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. You've got to save it for the Instagram. Make sure you give them the influencer. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. <laughs> I've already got sponsors on it. <laughs> AIA. Sponsored by the Vitality. Elephant in the Room podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Download now, now, yeah, now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing a LinkedIn post on the day. <laughs> Selfie. Oh, mate, that's Waiting fire. at the altar. No, that'll that's get a fire. thousand likes for sure. <laughs> Does it? Cognitive minimalism. It. <laughs> yeah. So what's your um because you're saying you're systemizing mm. systemizing everything. What are you what are you working on? I mean, I'm not trying to do so much on the tech side. I'm just I guess trying to figure out how do I get someone through the process much quicker. Yeah. Um and yeah, so I'm just the first calls. To be honest, that's it's all about that, you know. So I'm if like literally this morning. I mean, just on this before I came in here, you know, he sent me a message this morning. Maybe I think it was maybe yesterday. Uh, and I said, oh, let's catch up at three o'clock. And it's like, yep, okay, cool. So three o'clock call, ask him fifteen questions. No, these aren't ordered, ordered questions. And then kind of work it through and go. Well, actually, you know what? What you want to do, you can't do. Because for him, it was borrowing capacity. Mm. So if you want to do that, you've got to get your wife working. Um, does she want to work? Maybe not. Mm. Well, if she works, she could do this. Um, and then we've got to, so, you know, go away, digest that, and then we can kind of pick up the conversation. So, you know, I gave him what he needs to know in 15 minutes. And, you know, rather than, hey, mate, come on in, have a meeting, spend mm. an hour and a half. Whether that works long term, and I, I, I do think it's 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 pretty powerful. I think that definitely works, man, for sure. Like yeah. you don't want to be, you don't want to get people. Like I won't take a meeting with anybody now, even if they're a referral, no one without um, without having that phone call. And I think it's you got to like you got to make sure that you're that it's going to be right. Like yeah. for because otherwise you're just wasting their time. As yeah, well. I mean, I got another email the weekend. It's like, oh, hey, Chris, read your stuff. I'm looking for a financial advisor that. Uh, reviews my portfolio every year and gives me an update for a fee of $330 an hour. Do you offer this service? And I just went, hi, no, I don't offer this service. You know, like yeah. if you're not taking this seriously and you're <clears throat> trying to go straight to price, um, and like, so I'm just like, well, I'm not going to bother. Or another one is, uh, and I wouldn't do that anyway, but, um, you know, there's a, another one was like, oh, hey, Chris, we're really busy. We both work full time. Do you do weekends? Yeah, I like, <laughs> love that question. Well, no, I don't no. work weekends. If you want to see me, here's my office hours. Come see me. Um, yeah, you know, because you you kind of and you've you've got to kind of throw it back. I mean, in fairness, mm. uh, she wrote back and she goes, "Okay, cool, I respect that." And um, yeah, she's actually a really good client. I say to people, uh, I do work weekends, but I, but not but I just don't want to see you. Yeah, I'd want to do the work <laughs> that I want to do. Not. You should, give you should write this back. To do. You should write, uh, yeah, totally work all weekends, all the time. But um, no, we definitely just can't find a yeah. time to see you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a message from this guy the other day that I connected with on LinkedIn, and he said the message was literally, "Hey, um, can you get me twenty plus guaranteed, twenty plus percent guaranteed?" On cash to say yes, and I was like, I wrote him back. And I was like, "Hey, thanks for the note. Um, if I could, I would be a magician to rival David Copperfield and currently on tour around the world." He goes, sends me this thing back and goes, "I'm getting currently twelve percent plus cash." I was like, "Good on you." What the hell? hell? What do they do? What are these Bitcoin? That's but that's not. Is that <laughs> Mate, cash? I made Maybe I made five hundred percent in six months on Bitcoin Internet and sold cash. out at the top. Did you? Bazinga. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that how hey, right? your starting sprout? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no. I mean, it's a good journey. So you sold out. Mm -hmm. You were Mr. Crypto for a while. Mate, I'm still a massive believer in right. it. It's just I'm, um, 
not really interested in the volatility of it. Like, I don't like the volatility, but I mean, internet money is definitely a thing now mm. and it's not going anywhere. It's, there's a bunch of things to figure out. Um, but the concept is, I, I wish it was, it's clearly not a currency. So it's not, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, a currency is issued by a, com- a country. Um, and so it's not a currency and it's, it's not a commodity cause you can't really do anything with it. Um, and, and it's not an asset cause it doesn't provide any income or value. So mm. it's a weird thing, right? I, I'm not suggesting that we can figure it out, but it is definitely, it's, of wealth. It, 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 it's, it's hanging around. It's not going anywhere. I'd like to see it either pegged to a dollar um, I don't think it's going to replace, obviously, because mm. I, I, until governments start issuing, it's 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 not going to replace. Well, they can't, can they? Isn't that the whole thing? Of course they could, if they wanted to. Their own one. Yeah. It's a different one. Yeah, but the power of it is li- limited numbers of tokens, right? And not then really. that's not going to get a government excited if they can't print money or can't print tokens. No, you can not You can open-end it. Like, it, it, I mean, it's only limited <clears throat> to your ideas, so you can develop it in any way that you see mm. uh and um so it, it's definitely not going anywhere i mean I, I i invested in it purely based on the greater fool theory that mm. like i can't believe how much this this traction this is getting i'm just going to buy a bunch and then sell it back to them mm. um I'm, I'm, st- I'm still a massive fan of it but uh it is like i would like to see uh, in in within the next 10 years one to two percent of everyone's portfolio invested in it. I, I, mm-hmm. I think it's crazy to think that it's going away. And if it doesn't go away, then it's going to stick around. Um, but it's just it's just tulip early days at the moment. Mm. And as time goes on, it'll become more and more regulated, more and more stable, um, you know, especially when, when the ETF comes out. That's what I'm really waiting for. I, in fact, because <laughs> I tried to buy my first Bitcoin in 2013 and I found a guy on the internet, right? And so me and my mate sent him money, and then he just went missing. Oh, <laughs> right! But it, but it was really cheap. It was real, uh, you know. It's like a couple hundred bucks, and me and my mate just went halves in it. And we were like, okay, well, we didn't even know you could Shit. buy less than a full Bitcoin, right? We just thought it was there's a Bitcoin, so you just buy a Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he, he had all this good reputation and everything, and everyone all these reviews, and we're like, okay, because there wasn't even an exchange. You'd mm-hmm. literally go to a bank and send someone <laughs> money, and then they mm-hmm. send you a Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And um, Why did you want Bitcoin? Um, it just, it's just internet money. It just made sense for, to me from the moment I heard it. But I, I didn't think it was going to blow up in value so much. I was mm. just like, wow, like I definitely just want to buy one of these b- internet monies. And then, <laughs> um, and, 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 and yeah, once it, once it gets to an ETF, get it out of town, mm. right? Because then, especially if, if it's not a synthetic ETF, if it's an actual ETF, they have to buy these Bitcoins and then you're going to get monstrous amounts of money into it. And look, there's many, there's many arguments as to why like don't go and invest in it. I, mm. I'm, I'm like, I, I enjoy, I enjoy the concept of it, but I'm, I'm, I think I always say it's got a 50% chance of going mm. to a hundred thousand, 50% chance of going to zero. Mm. Like it's, I mean, it was interesting no when hairdressers knows. are starting to spruik it on Facebook. hundred percent. You know, and that's where we were at. Hairdressers. Like, oh yeah. Like man. it was just, it's so weird that there was, was this crazy, crazy period. And like I was having yeah. like a quarter of my client base was talking to me about Bitcoin. Yeah. Like they're just asking me questions and then yeah. it tanked. No questions. No questions. Nothing. But it didn't. And it didn't. It didn't tank. Like oh, it just went. Down, it's down, still down, down, down. up like a thousand percent from twelve months ago. Mm. <laughs> like, like when it tanked, yeah, yeah, it tanked yeah. from its height, um, which is what I repetitively like to say. Sold it at. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then it's going to keep pumping and dumping it, pumping and dumping it. Yeah, until it gets some form of uh, regulation yeah. and uh, and security around it. But it, it's not going anywhere. There's no way it's mm. going anywhere. All so right, mark it, mark that word episode 150 of X Y Advisor. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, That's say. confidence. <laughs> oh, it's not. I'm not suggesting it's going to blow up in value or even be worth more than one cent. But it's yeah. not going anywhere. No. It's it's definitely here to stay. Size down. It's the, it's the geeks and the geeks and the internet people. They like it. Man, they yeah. love it so much. Yeah. It's libertarians. It, and yeah, libertarians right. are scary. Yeah. Yeah. Li- libertarians are a bit crazy. Like they they just they they're Do something. extremists. Excuse, excuse mm. the pun. 
and uh, yeah, and uh, and and techies, techies love it, but mm. they just techies don't quite understand the concept yeah. of of financial matters. So yeah, I mean that's right. Yeah, exactly. You think it's a blue sky world that it makes sense, right? And it's internet money, and it should just you know stop inflation, and we can all yeah. the world can get involved. Yeah. But, you know, there's governments involved who the, the, do not want this and who is in control of the world, correct. your banks and your governments. Because at the end of the day, like, everyone's like, well, what's money anyway? It's, it's worthless. And I'm like, no, no, no. A government with people in the police force can hold a gun to someone's head and, and say, you have to accept this as your money. Like yeah. we, we are forced to accept the Australian currency as money. There's no what, what Bitcoin's going to start uh, this, uh, with no owner is going to start hiring a bunch of agents walking around with guns going, you have to accept Bitcoin. Like no mm. one's, no, th- there's no enforcement of it. So that, mm. that's a major issue that most people aren't understanding it. But there's no longer any enforcement of any other currency effectively because you can live in any country and use any other currency, right? I don't understand that sentence. Like you, like you could, you don't have to use, well, I don't have to use Australian currency if I don't want to. In Australia? Of course you do. Well, yeah, in Australia. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to use the currency yeah. of the country. No, you do. Yeah. You could order. You, you yeah, can't order like Thai food and pay in like bars. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't. You can pay in internet money though. Absolutely you can. <laughs> That's my tie, that's uh, <laughs> Mate, of um, all right. Uh, well, should we go grab a beer? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Well, Beatty, always a pleasure to have you <clears throat> on here, mate. Congratulations. You've already got more listeners than we do, and we've oh. been doing this for like years. So uh, you've either got a better Sorry. voice or a better face for radio. <laughs> I'm not quite, quite sure which one it is, but <laughs> congratulations <laughs> anyway. Which you've got. How many listeners you got? Um, well, we get about 200 a day. So we get 6,000 6, a month. Yeah. No. So if you guys are getting a bit bored, you can always jump on uh, the elephant in the room. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> how, how, how can people find out more about what you do? Uh, so jump on iTunes if that's where you're listening or theelephantintheroom.com.au mm-hmm. um, and start listening. Yeah. And, st- and and if you haven't yet paired with Batesy, if you're the one person in Australia that hasn't paired with Batesy. <laughs> He's been banned from LinkedIn, so yeah. connect with him. Connect. He can yeah. connect. And, then, and then you get this really cool couple of times a day, yeah. some snippet, great little content. Actually, if there's any... Uh, financial planners who want to talk about why financial planners completely ignore property um, and don't educate themselves on property and don't spend time trying to truly understand property um, and actually believe that they do um, and want to jump on the podcast, um, we'd really like to discuss that topic in more detail because... um, yeah, I mean, it is the biggest flaw, I think, in the financial planning industry. The biggest asset in Australia for most of people's wealth comes from property. The decisions you make around property are the most important decisions because they're the biggest decisions you make. But as financial advisors, we don't try to truly help people there. Um, and, uh, you know, everything from helping people buy their first home, like questioning, are they doing the right thing? You know, is this really the right property for them? Are they going to outgrow it? Should they renovate it? Should they do a construction? Should they rent? Should they buy an investment property? What type of investment property should they buy? Should they develop? Should they do a townhouse? You know, the questions keep going. And if you don't know the answers to these, you, the clients are going to go somewhere else and look for them. So, you know, I guess if you're a financial planner and you will do consider yourself to be a kind of property knowledge there, then I'd love to come on the podcast because I think we want to keep talking about this topic because it's, uh, you know, people need to get advice around property, but there, there's no one really to give it to them. Uh, fortunately, they go to, you know. Aussie home loans. Yeah, Aussie home loans. But they're Aussie just. Aussie home loans. They're just going to, uh, you know, sell them a mortgage. You know, they're not going to give them good advice generally. They just want the transaction done. So they go for the least line of resistance. You go to a buyer's agent, a buyer's agent's going to tell you to buy. Uh, you go to a property <laughs> seller, they're going to tell you to buy. You go to or, a real estate or sell. agent. Uh, well, p- property seller. Yeah. Um, you know, anyway. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so just. So, how should these people reach out to you, Mr. Bates? Just jump on. You know who I am. LinkedIn. <laughs> sort yeah, of. Find the man. Yeah. Mate, yeah. always a pleasure to have you on here, mate. Uh, you're always welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Bates. <laughs>